Hi, I'm Dan, and today we're going to be checking out Pi Infra. So currently I use Ansible for managing things in my servers. It's real basic stuff, so just running one-off commands or running update commands to keep my systems up to date. But I've never fully got on with Ansible. Every time I have to go into the documentation, I find I have trouble with it. It's probably built for something much bigger, for much larger needs than I use it for. But it got me thinking whether there's something a bit simpler that's a bit more suited to me and my use case and my mental model. And that's when I come across Pi Infra. It meets the one main requirement that I have for a bit of software like this is that it's got agentless execution. So we don't need to have anything constantly running on the servers or pre-installed. We can just use our existing SSH access to run and execute things as needed. But I'm just gonna get started, have a play at using things and see how we get on. So I've split the view here with my terminal on the left. So I'll just copy over this pip install command and run that. I'm running Fedora 41. I think I technically had to downgrade my version of Python because of issues with other software. But depending on what operating system you're running, you might have to uh, make sure you've got Python and pip installed. Which to be fair, it looks like they've got further instructions here if needed, at least for Windows. I think most Linux systems already have pip pre-installed anyway. Okay, then it's taken us through a few concepts. So we've got inventory, uh, which is it looks kind of like uh, Ansible inventory where that's where we have details about the hosts and how we group the hosts and things like that. And then we have operations, whereas I think Ansible like had actions and then you can wrap those up into the playbooks. I can't remember the exact terminology. But it looks to be a similar approach. These are the things that we do and these are the things that we do those actions on. Now it's got some examples here of just running one-off commands. So we'll give one of these a go just to make sure everything's installed and working. So pi infra and then my server. I'm going to choose something that's in my SSH config already so i'm just going to use my own website server exec echo hello world give that a run cool and that seemed to all run okay and i'm guessing this is the output here and that all seemed to work quite nicely let's do something slightly more dynamic let's cut out the file of etc os release to see what operating system i'm running on that server so this file should have more than one line, which is what I'm interested in. Okay, so we got them all out here with the host that I'm connecting to is kind of prefixed in front of the lines. And looking at this as well, we can run things on Docker or we can also just target a local machine as well, which could be pretty useful. So let's replace my server name with local and see what operating system I'm running on this machine. There we go. Of course, that was a lot quicker and yep, yeah, got my Fedora 41 output. Okay, so scrolling down the getting started guide a bit further, it's talking about deploys. And I think these are more like the Ansible playbooks, um, but it guides us through creating an inventory file initially, and then creating a deploy file. And these are written in Python. Whereas I think Ansible playbooks were written in YAML. And personally, I'm not too fond of either Python or YAML, but I quite like the idea of writing it in a kind of a full language rather than a config file, because then you've got a lot of power and flexibility potentially where you might need it. Whereas YAML, I always find YAML to be a kind of complex format. I'm never sure what exactly what the data types are, you know, at least compared to something simpler like JSON. So although not fond of Python, yeah, I think this could be a preference. But let's give this a go. Let's do what I basically just did. So cut out that file for multiple hosts using a deploy just going to create a directory to play with things in and i'll go into that directory and clear the terminal so let's start creating this inventory and it's a .py file as well so it looks like maybe they could be dynamic as well since they're just python files i'm just going to copy out the example basically and add my systems that I ran before on here okay so there's my remote server and my local machine and now let's create this deploy file Okay, so in this example, they're importing apt and server, and then I can't see server being used, but they are using apt to manage apt packages. But we just want to cat out a file. So I'm guessing we could either find a similar action or operation, that's what they call it, to uh, cat out a file, or maybe like a generic one that execs command, kind of like we did on the command line. So let's go to using operations. Oh, I kind of wanted more of a reference. Do they have a reference? Yep, there we go. Operations index. And I don't see a cat one here. Is there a general, there's general files. We've got files get, and there's also one for line. So I'm not seeing anything that's directly suitable for catting the contents out of a file to then come up on the command line like we did in the example. But I think it's probably because the proper way would be to get it via this files.get and then cat it out or echo it out locally within the script. 
but I still want to try and replicate that as a shell exec command just to see how similar doing it via the command line is relative to one of these deploy files. So while looking through the operations, I did see this server.shell operation, which looks like is equivalent to what we did on the command line. So let's get rid of apt because we're not currently using that. Then we'll run this. So server.shell, then it looks like we give it a name and then we define the actual commands to run. So what I don't know from this is whether this is going to output the kind of results of this command or the whether we have to capture that as part of the code here and then do something with it. But we'll just give it a go and then see what happens. So I think it was pi infra and then the inventory file and then the deploy file. So it's picked up the systems in our inventory. So it's kind of detected that these are gonna create changes. It's asking us whether we wanna continue. So I press enter, just go ahead. Okay, so that succeeded, but we didn't see the output at all. So if we did wanna run an arbitrary command, how do we get the output? It doesn't say this returns anything, but intuition might say that whatever the return content is would go into maybe a variable we allocate to it. Let's give that a go, and then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But let's just get an idea of how kind of potentially intuitive and hackable this is. So we'll just put that into like an output variable, and then print. Well, let's write that and then give that a run again. Okay, yep, so that didn't do what I hoped, but it um, printed out these ones, so we're not getting the output as part of that. Okay, I've just been diving into the docs a little bit further, in specific around some of the uh, information around operations, and I found this section on operation output, which basically explains exactly what I was trying to find. So yeah, you can't use it directly because of the kind of order of execution of things, but it looks like it is possible, albeit maybe a little bit clumsy. It's just a shame you can't just pass an extra parameter or something. But again, we're probably doing things in the wrong way because we're not familiar enough with the bit of software. But let's just give this a go and see how this turns out. So I'll copy that and then edit my deploy file again. Then I'll get rid of this and this. Oh no, we do need something there. So let's put that in as result. Let's put the example. And then I'm going to get rid of got result. So it just outputs the contents. So we'll save that and then rerun it whoops yep i didn't do some extra imports all right so those are added let's give this a try again well it looks like it might have worked but i've probably made a silly mistake here yep i just echoed out the string of the file path rather than catting the file cool so it worked that time uh, we got our server, remote server first, and then our local system. And it's not too readable, but it looks like we've got some flexibility in the code logic to make that a bit more readable. But while scouring the documentation, I just see there's these things called facts. And then within here, there's server facts, and then server.os release, which is essentially what we're getting. So this is probably the proper way equivalent of what I'm trying to do here. So let's try and update the file that we have to use these facts. All right, so I'm gonna replace my code with what we're seeing there. But this doesn't seem like it's enough. I think we're gonna to need to import this host and OS release thing from somewhere. So I quickly found this example of host facts. So we're importing host from pyinfra. Then we need to do from pyinfra.facts.server import OS release, I'm guessing, because that's the one that we're after. And so it looks like these are a bit different compared to operations because these do return data and can be used right away. So if we put this into an OS variable and then we'll just print that out, let's see what this does. Okay, cool. So we've got our local output there and then our remote server output here. I still get this operation thing. So if I press enter, yeah, just nothing happens. So I think we could either tie that into the proper logger system that we were using before to put it into essentially the operations area. Or I'm guessing you, it's pretty flexible in what you can do with that. Part of me for the stuff that I want to do, I would like just kind of a nice simple default output where I could output, you know, a few lines of things for each of my servers in a very clean and dedicated way. Like it's almost running on the command line was formatted just a little bit better. What we could do is run it on command line but pass in our new inventory file. So pi infra 
in inventory and then was it exec and a couple of dashes and then our command so cat etc os release cool yeah now we get the output with all of the local server stuff and then all the remote server stuff so okay we could just do things like that and again maybe there is like logger things for being able to format it a bit nicer when you are doing things via the deploy files so i'd now like to try this in a slightly more complex scenario so connecting to a couple of servers that have different requirements but we're doing the same thing so i'd like to update the packages on a couple of my servers but where one requires sudo access and is accessed via a user whereas the other one is just accessed via root so it doesn't need sudo once you it's connected over ssh so what i'll do i won't bore you with going through the documentation and things i'll just figure that out myself and then recap at the end okay so i've now got things set up so if we have a look at the inventory first, I've now got a couple of hosts in here. Both of them are containers on my local networks, LXC containers. And this is the format where you can find the host and then data to go with that host. And because I'm using SSH here, so that's the SSH connector. And then there's lots of different available bits of data that you can supply along with these. So I've got the SSH user root and SSH user Dan for the two different servers. And then in terms of keys and passwords that should just take it from my local SSH agent and SSH config. And then looking at the deploy file. So I'm now using the method that we used earlier to get the um, OS release file data to get the user instead. So when you're doing host or get fact user, and we're checking if it's the root user, because then I know that if it's not the root user, then we're probably going to need to use sudo. And then you can define sudo on each of these operations individually by adding another parameter in here with underscore sudo equals true. And there's many related properties, like you can define the password in there and things. Or alternatively, like I'm doing here, you could do config.sudo, and that appears to need all caps. And I'm saying we need to use sudo if we're not root. And then just a couple of built-in kind of or provided operations here. So it comes with an apt operation and then we're just using uh, apt update to update the repositories and then apt upgrade with auto remove added in there too. So I haven't run this. My Python syntax might also be off, but um, we'll give it a go and just see if this happens to work. So pi infra, then inventory, then deploy. Let's go. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. My Python syntax is very much off. So of course it's Python, so we have to do not instead of an exclamation mark. In one way it's simpler, in another way it's very much not. Let's save this and give this another go. Oh, okay, right, so we're being prompted by for a pseudo password. I quite like that. With Ansible, I always had trouble, like you had to pass in like a specific parameter, and then I'd also like store some of the secrets in their encrypted system. But then you'd still kind of need a password overall to decrypt those. But I like that we're able to prompt on the command line in this way. So let's give this a go. Okay, I've typed it in, let's press enter. All right, so that was before it actually did anything there, prompted for the password, but now we're going on to updating things. Or have we already, we've already done app packages? Okay, let's press enter and see what happens now. Oh no, okay, so now we're doing updating app repositories. And now we're upgrading app packages. Okay, so on one we had no changes, so I'm guessing that there was no further updates to make. And then on the other one we had success, so I'm assuming that upgraded the app packages. Okay, so it looks like without too much hassle at all really, we've been able to perform exactly what I needed out of this bit of software. So of course we've only really just skimmed the surface and you could probably do way more powerful and much greater things. There's so many operations and connectors and things built into this to do what you need to do. For example, I saw it's got like a MySQL operation in there that has a MySQL dump built in so you could easily, you know, back up your databases. But overall, from a service level test, I'm quite impressed, especially by the documentation. It had exactly what I needed and it was easy to follow, which is probably my main complaint with Ansible. And then my main gripe about this is probably the formatting of the output on the command line when you run things. Now, I must admit, this is probably quite specific to my niche of and the awkward things that I'm trying to do when I'm running this. There's better ways to do things probably. But I did have a search and I couldn't see that there's any kind of like alternate format outputs. It'd be nice to have an option just to have like a clean output so that you're able to like print other things without all of this and unless you like pass a verbose argument. And maybe that's possible and I just haven't, you know, read the documentation enough to understand that that is possible. But otherwise, I've overall, I've quite enjoyed using it and I think this would be a preference over something like Ansible going forward for me. Just on the basis that 
I've gone from scratch to being able to do exactly what I need to do with uh, some kind of automation system like this just in the sort of time period of this video. I think that's a very good sign. But overall, yeah, that's my thoughts on Pi Infra. Let me know if it looks like something that you might use. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.